I'd like to speak to you about a particular aspect of the Eucharist, and that aspect is the aspect of memory. In order to understand that, we have to understand the Jewish idea of memory. For the Jewish people, memory was, was at the very heart of their experience. They had so many memories of their existence and of their journey as, as, a people, as the people of God. But in particular for them, the Passover was the great memory, as it still is today for the Jewish people. The Passover for them was, of course, this great movement from slavery to freedom, uh, the beginning of their life as a people. Now, for them, for the Jewish people, their great mysteries, their great events, particularly the, the event of Passover, were not simply things lost in the past. For you and for me, when we remember something, we're remembering something over and done with, uh, something that happened once and will never be part of our experience again, even though we'd like to, to remember it. Even if we have photographs, it's still over and done with. If we celebrate a birthday, it's something that happened a long t some time ago, perhaps a long time ago, or an anniversary, or, or a graduation, for instance. All those things are past events, but not for the Jewish people when it came to their great, their great events particularly Passover. When they celebrate Passover to this day, they are part of it. They are in that experience. It is happening now, and they are moving with that event. That's a foreign concept for us, the very idea of something becoming present that happened a long time ago, perhaps even thousands of years. For them, it's a, it's a way of life, and that makes all the difference. Now, the Eucharist was in one form a Passover meal, the, a meal in which our Lord is going to become the new Passover. The Passover had been from physical slavery to physical freedom. Now it will be from the slavery of sin to the slavery of grace, the slavery of, to the freedom of grace and the freedom of life, pardon me. Our Lord then does that at the Last Supper, and he does it with the same elements that we used at Passover, bread and wine. There were also other elements at Passover, but these two were the very substance of it. So our Lord then takes bread and wine and brings, makes present an event that, will, that he will himself bring to us the event of his passion and death. His passion and death, then, are reflexive, so that every time we celebrate the, Euch the Eucharist, they transcend time. Uh, they were reflexive when they first celebrated it. Now we make present an event that happened once and for all and is over with, but becomes present now in our midst. And that's the great mystery of the Eucharistic presence. Mm -hmm.